All right. So let's kick it off. Thank you very much for joining again. The, it's exciting to see at least some people joining, and uh, we have quite a few uh, viewers after the fact. That's why we're recording. So <clears throat> today we talk. We will talk about uh, customer satisfaction. And customer satisfaction, as you all uh, kind of aware, uh, is very important. They will talk about that. Now, the most important piece that we do want to raise today is how do we define the customer needs uh, in order to develop new products and services, and specifically how we do that with this platform. As usual, we're starting with a quote, and in this case, it's from uh, one of the founders of, uh, of Walmart. Uh, there's no, there's only one boss, um, the customer, right? And it is. It's a so sorry true. for interruption, but the system is not full in this case. If you have only boss. <laughs> true, but that's that's you the need field and the <laughs> second substance. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but I guess I I guess you know this is the motto that he kind of uh, went with, and it seemed to be working for him. Right. Uh, just a reminder, uh, please, uh, we are a little bit repositioning ourselves and currently we're calling ourselves a machine assisted facilitator for problem solving and innovation projects. And we will see, especially in this webinar, why machine assistant becoming more and more uh, prevalent in this in this world today. So let's kick it off. Sorry, Alex. Of um, yeah. I hear a little bit of noise in the background. Perhaps if we all uh, mute, accept yourself, it may help the quality of your recording. Yeah, thank you for, for that note. And I will, I mean, I can help people mute a little bit. All right, great. Thanks, Juan. Uh, and by the way, if you do have any questions on the way, please stop me. We do have time today uh, for, for questions and even the discussion, no problem, or just write in the chat. So first of all, uh, why customer satisfaction is so important, so crucial in our world, right? Uh, and the reason for that, there's several reasons for that, and there's a lot of deba debates about that. But in reality, the only product service that actually accepted by a customer and he's ready to, to pay for is the one that he, that, uh, that uh, satisfies the customer, obviously, right? Um, another thing that sat the customer satisfaction is the main driver for technology. So if you look at any di many different products and services, this is how technology kind of move, moves forward. What the customer needs this is where we develop in the technology and the products and so on. Now, <clears throat> and the third thing that we put in here is the whole evolution is, is based on the customer satisfaction, right? If the customer doesn't need something, it will basically a product or service will die and we'll see that in a second. Now, as, as I just mentioned in, 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 a moment ago, about 95% of the product and that's that's not from us, uh, uh, about 95% uh, of the new products, they basically fail. They start, they look like a nice new idea, but they, they're not going any, any further. Same with startups, 90, I think 90% of startup fail, it's actually a fairly low number. I believe it's much, much higher, but they fail, 90% uh, of startups, they fail at the very, very early stages when there is no even adoption. Right now, interesting fact that if we look at the uh, something called Global Innovation Index, the loss of innovation opportunities cost the, the world one point four trillion dollars as of twenty nineteen. That's a staggering number, right? So first of all, it means that people invest in something that nobody needs. People could potentially invest the same money into something that actually useful and so on, $1.4 trillion a year. And it's actually growing at the rate of seven, over 17% a year. So by now, as you can imagine, this is an even higher number, right? So why is it even happening though? And the reason for that is most of the products and most of the startups, and if you look at uh, 
VC market and how to talk to uh, how um, uh, the investors talk to startups. The first question that they're asking, what problem does it actually solve? What problem the startup solves? What problem the, 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 you know, the, the product or service solves? And if there is no answer for that, nothing else matters. Right now, how we usually go about to um, define what customer needs. The traditional approach, and this is what many, many companies do, they basically ask the customer, what do you want, right? In a different ways. Uh, and uh, we found this, uh, many of these different YouTube challenge, uh, channels or, or videos specifically about Windows and how to disable different services that nobody needs. And there is hundreds of these videos, right? That's just one example of why of, of different products and services and, and features in the system, in this case, Windows, but you can find it every, everywhere, that people actually work hard to disable them because nobody needs them and they they making our life harder, right? Um, so these kinds of services that nobody needs, nobody uh, doesn't solve anybody's problem, they most likely will fail and not going to be adopted. Now, we're proposing a little bit different approach. Now, another, another point that I wanted to make, uh, I did work you know, many years with different product managers and good product managers, they actually do try to get to the point of the problem that the customer deals with. But they going through a very, very long and tedious process. They collect a lot of information, they collect a lot of data. It, it, it becomes sometimes months of work, right? And then when they do understand the problem space for, for that particular customer, then they can come up with a solution. So still the trend is correct today. It's, it's not wrong, it's just very tedious. Now, what we're proposing is still ask the customer, but again, the question is what question do we ask? And what we're proposing to ask is what keeps you busy, right? How, basically how your day-to-day -day looks like. What are, you, what are you doing all day? For example, if it's a software engineer, he writes code. If it's, um, uh, I don't know, accountant, he, he digs into spreadsheets all the time or, or whatever the case is. Right? What keeps you busy? And the key here is to remove, remove that action, the function from, uh, from the customer. So for example, if, um, if we're talking about, if we're talking about um, as software engineering and people writing code, guess what? There is a lot of tooling right now that exists and we'll go through uh, some more examples today. Um, there are a lot of toolings right now that basically generate code by just simply asking for it, right? So, and it was adopted really, really well. In this example, it's an iRobot or, or whatever the robot is. It was adopted very widely. It's actually a pretty expensive product still being adopted because it actually solves somebody's problem. It's annoying to sweep the floor all the time. Now somebody took this function away from you and, and does the work for you. Now, again, just to recap, to satisfy a customer, we want to take one of his functions or one or more of his functions away from him, one of his activities away from him. And we wanna go by example. Let's take a traditional basic old car, right? The driver had a lot of functionality, a lot of activities in, in, in the car. He has, uh, you know, he needs to uh, move the steering wheel, operate different, different pedals. Um, you know, at some point there was uh, three pedals, um, uh, play with the, gear, uh, with the gearbox and so on and so forth, right? There was a lot of functionality for that driver. One day, one of the companies, I actually don't know even who, I should have looked that up, but one of the companies decided, you know what, let's take that away and basically replace, we, you don't need clutch, you don't need to move 
so much the gear lever. Let's make the automatic transmission, right? And what did what happened actually? It took much more functions away from from the driver. Not only the clutch pedal, not only the gearbox. The the gearbox is still there, but it's just not needed as much. Also, the engine, since we transmitted a lot of a lot of functionality to the engine, we created different boosters and cruise control and so on and so forth. Now the life of the driver during the driving period is much easier, right? You, you, you don't need to do as much. You don't need to worry about, about as many things. The function, the overall function of the car is still the same, right? Now, if we summarize these, and by the way, we use the, the functional modeling for that. If you summarize and we get the functional rank uh, in, uh, for this entire system of different components, for the basic car, somewhere in the past, again, a lot of functionality was on the driver. Now with the modern cars, a lot of functionality on the, on the engine, drive, driver's functionality actually being reduced. If you think about the ongoing trend going forward, they're self-driving cars. So potentially functionality of a driver is going away completely. The only thing that the function of the driver going to be, or driver at that point, is going to be, I want to go to point from point A to point B. That's it, right? So again, it's a good example of how we taking away functions from the customer, in this case, the driver, and putting it somewhere else, right? And that's exactly the, the concept of how do we actually do that? If traditionally, normally a customer or a human being, in order to receive some sort of function from a system that he operates, he needs to do something. Basically, he, pr he provides a function to get a function, right? Now, if we identify something like that, uh, what we can do, we can just eliminate the function completely. Sometimes we can, but usually we need to move the function somewhere else, right? And in this case, like an example of a car, we're moving this function to a supplier to the engine, right? But still as a customer needs, he receives the same function from the system. And I'll pause here for a moment for any questions. Uh, yes, Alex, I have a question. It, mm -hmm. what, what you appear to be saying to me is, is that I do not need to be so much interested in what my customer needs as what my customer's customer needs from your the, the graph at the, at the bottom. Am I reading it correctly? Uh, can you clarify that? If I am, uh, I don't okay. think I understood the question fully. Okay. The, uh, the, the the idea is I provide something uh, to my my customer. Mm -hmm. For instance, I, I provide uh, information on availability of uh, mm -hmm. parts, inventory control information. Mm -hmm. And my my customer uses that to control which inventory he keeps in stock. Mm -hmm. But which inventory he keeps in stock depends on what his customer is, the, the plant needs these particular parts. So okay. the, the customer, the, the customer's customer says, I need these parts and then my customer, I tell, you keep these parts in stock because he needs these parts to do work later on. Or uh, for, for instance, uh, automobiles we're talking about. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the customer's customer may be a regulator. For instance, in California, they say, Okay, you need to have this many electric cars. Mm -hmm. Well, 
the people that buy the cars are people that live in California, not the regulators. So what I do is I provide, I tell my, my customer, I need an electric car and we get all the electric cars and the car manufacturers meet the needs of their customer, the regulator to have more of these kinds of cars. What I'm trying to say is, is don't just look at the next step, but maybe look at one or two more steps beyond that to see what's driving the customer's need. You look at what he does, great, he's doing this and this, but what what is driving him to do that? And look at that it, as you build up your idea for a new product or service. That's that's what right. I'm trying to say. So, uh, thanks for the question. I, I do want to expand on that. So, it's very important. Like in functional model, it's very important to understand what the product of the system is. It's very important to understand who is your customer is when you're working on a, on a particular system. And like you say, in, in any system, if you think about it, there's only one customer. So for example, if you talk and if you want to address a customer of a customer, that first level of customer becomes one of your system components. Right? And potentially that first level of customer may be removed. So it depends whose life you're trying to make easier. And that particular person becomes a customer. I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say, you know, majority of companies, they talk about the customer as a, the actual customers of the company, the ones who pay money. Uh, but is it always true? Not really. Sometimes a group of groups of people, especially in the larger organizations, they serving internal teams, internal users, internal people, and so on. Maybe internal systems. So maybe the customer is a system, not necessarily a person. Uh, that's a little bit extreme because we're going into the world of functional model, but still conceptually it could happen, right? So the customer is not necessarily the paying human being. The customer is whoever you're trying to make life easier. And for in your particular case, for example, as somebody who manages the inventory, if you want to make his life easier, he becomes your customer. If you, make, if you want to make the life of his customers easier, that person becomes the customer, right? It's depends on what's your target customer is really. And we will see that in the, in the example as well. It's very important to understand who is it we, we trying to address? Who is it we trying to make the life easier? Uh, may I add something? Of course. Uh, by the way, when we talk to a uh, uh, customer, uh, uh, service guys, uh, we are not customers. They are customers, are uh, their managers. We are not customers. Just uh, let you understand. And uh, what I wanted to point out our position that people don't want to do what they do. Therefore, if we bring something replacing their functions, uh, they will be satisfied. And actually all uh, technology evolves into direction not doing what we do. This is a vision. Uh, and I think we can come up with many, many examples for the iPhone, one of them. You know, we used to click, you know, push buttons, moving buttons. Not anymore. We can just say to the phone, hey, call John. Uh, driving car, less and less functionality there. Um, and so on. There's like, if you think about it, 
um, you're talking about data collection, right? Somebody who is managing inventory used to uh, actually manage the inventory manually. You know, he took the part, he gave it to his customer. He said, okay, I now I need to mark one that I have one part less. Today, it's all happening automatically for him in, in, in at least big uh, uh, um, uh, warehouses, right? Because you say, you basically talk to the computer and you say, hey, bring me this part. Once he brought it, this part, you have this one part less in the system. You, didn't, you don't even need, need, need to worry about it. But the function exists. Just somebody else does it or something in this case does it, right? Your life easier, you as a customer who are managing the inventory. The function still exists, probably in a much better way because it's automated. Uh, you have less things to do, you're happy. So is, the, is this, uh, Anatoly, a new law of uh, <clears throat> basically technical system evolution? You know, the uh, people want to eliminate what they're doing uh, or is it just part of, uh, of the law of transition to a super system? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> looks looks good, both of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if, if if I may uh, uh, chime in, yeah, because, um, please. Uh, this is a how should I put it? A relatively very low uh, old trend or law of technological system evolution, which was first proposed. Uh, in the beginning of the 1980s, and uh, the name of this trend slash law is elimination of human involvement. Uh, the oh, idea yeah. is that more and more functions uh, presently performed by us humans get assigned or delegated uh, to engineers or technological systems. And actually, there is a logic in uh, assigning uh, different functions to, to systems. Uh, so. Thank you, great, great. That's, that's, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's widely uh, described in uh, available literature in English and Spanish, Korean, yeah. and many other languages. Okay. Excellent. We just converted it into a tool to uh, to define what uh, what you can propose for customer. I just comment on the history. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's all good. Okay, very good. Right. Thank you. Cool. So, uh, any other questions before we move on? Right. So, speaking of tool, uh, we did uh, build uh, something that called action prevention action. APA in short, uh, it is available in our platform for quite a while actually. And uh, today it's also got a boost of a little bit of AI help uh, to, to help us think. But the concept is still the same. The, in order to achieve this, this process based on our vision, uh, we need to answer these, uh, this set of questions. First of all, who is your potential customer, right? extremely important to understand who we're talking about, right? It, it's not necessarily from a marketing perspective, how we market that product. No, we need to understand who is the customer. You see an accountant that works on a daily basis. You see, it could be still an account, but a freelancer that does work three times a week. We need to understand who, who that customer is, right? The second question is what, keeps him busy. Basically, what is, he, what is he doing all day long? Writing emails, filling in spreadsheets, all of these little things that potentially at that level of details of what he see actually, what his actions are or functions, quote unquote, are. The next, uh, the next question is, we need to understand why is he doing that? Anatoly, you wanted to, to add something? Yeah, yeah, I just want to add, uh, uh, I, I apply it a lot of times and sometimes when i ask people what keeps you busy people say for instance i am a proving killed 
I'm reducing cost. This is completely wrong. No one is improving ill. No one is uh, reducing cost or uh, I don't know, improving uh, tool availability or so. You are sending emails, you are reading emails, you are pull data, you are analyzing data. This is what you're physically doing. This is uh, very important to, uh, uh, otherwise this uh, tool is not working. So sorry for interruption. All right, it's all good. So uh, then having all of these different functions of the uh, of, of that potential customer, uh, we need to understand why is he doing each and every one of them. For example, uh, like Anatoly gave an example of pulling the data. Why does he need that? Analyzing the data. What's the point of it? What's he, what is he trying to achieve, right? In reality, the question is what problem is he trying to solve? by by doing whatever he's doing right because otherwise people wouldn't do something if they didn't have a problem right and then the next kind of the last question is what can we do really and that might potentially be a harder question to answer is what can we do in order to eliminate that function for example pulling the data maybe it's done automatically and we need to build some sort of tool or integration with other systems that will, will provide this data out of the box and will just sit in his, on his desk every morning. Or just hire somebody who will do the same function somebody else, but the customer that we're dealing with, the problem is solved, right? The bottom line, we need to solve the problem of the customer around, the, around his activity. Okay, so a, a question then. What, mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is to prevent the activities that the customer really doesn't want to do and enable the customer to do what he wants to do. Is that, right. am I understanding correctly? So we're, we're way, the activity we're preventing is things that he doesn't want to do. Correct. Correct. Uh, and it, that's by the way, it's, it's an interesting question because we, in one of our previous webinars, we talked about what is the problem, right? And understanding what's the problem, it's also kind of follows the same, the same question that you just asked. And the example that we gave in there, you know, uh, having a coffee, you need to go and have a lunch with your friends. Is it a problem? No, not really. A manager invited you for lunch. That might be a problem, right? So the definition of the problem kind of integrates into these questions as well, because something that people doing in order to solve their problems, by definition, something that they don't want to do. Is that the answer to the question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Cool. So in Pre's platform, and we will dive into the, the actual real example, uh, we have this tool available. Uh, it's called Action Preventing Action among all of our uh, existing tools today. It sits right here, and we'll show how to use it in a moment. Uh, let's move into the platform. So we already created a project uh, that sits in there. And what we just seen in, in the screenshot in there is, is exactly this, this screenshot and action preventing action is sitting in here. Uh, and we're gonna go through exactly the same flow that we just presented. Uh, and I tell you, who was the what was the customer that we wanted to analyze? Uh, let's let's take a uh, process engineer and microchip manufacturer. Uh, engineer in microchip, microchip. Uh, manufacturing. manufacturing. Oops, my apologies. Mm -hmm. 
No, you, did you, I spell you, it correctly? You wrote, yes. Yeah, do you, you wrote twice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, All right? So we defined the customer because we decided uh, that specific brush, a, a customer that we want to deal with. Again, in this case, ideally we should go as detailed as, as we can uh, because process engineering pro in microchip manufacturing, there may potentially be more than one type of these process engineers. I don't know. But if we can narrow down some one very, very specific, um, as an example, we, we've seen people saying, oh, an engineer, right? About half of the world are engineers or half of the working world are engineers. So consider them as an engineer. And another what half of the world is thinking they're engineers. True. So <laughs> what, what does it mean? So we do need to get a little bit into specific, right? Now, customer's description. This is where we want to understand, you know, what is that customer is? What is he dealing with on a daily basis? How he day-to-day -day -day looks like and so on. And here we have a little bit of help from, from our dearest uh, uh, AI. And <clears throat> what it does basically, we, our, our concept of AI usage, AI cannot solve problems at all, right? It doesn't, it's not built to solve problems. What it can do, it can be a conversation partner, right? It could give us hints. It can give us some information that, that it has available. So it is a conversation, a current conversation partner. Now, what happens many times, as you imagine, if you're sitting with, any, with your own self and thinking about something, it's like, it, it's hard, right? It's hard to start to, to kick things off. What this allows us to do, this conversation part and allows us to do, and many times it's a human being, is saying, hey, Bob, can you come over? I need to bounce some ideas off of you, right? That is the conversation starter. And that's great when we have the people to, to um, kind of use them as a rubber ducks. Uh, it's not always true. And we don't always want to involve somebody else, right? I'll just use this. Um, and uh, use whatever information <clears throat> it provided us here. But basically it gave us some example, we can go ahead and refine it in a way that we want. Do we even agree with this, with this description uh, or, or does, does just really conversation start and we can, uh, we can do whatever we need into that. So let's say, let's assume we agree with that. That's our great customer description that we want, that's all good. We go into the next step, right? And the next step really is answering that question, what keeps him busy? What is it you doing on a daily, on hourly, on a minute basis, right? Again, same here, we can ask the help from, from AI a little bit or add our own thoughts or potentially collect thoughts from your group, other people, whoever. Right. Uh, so one of them analyzing data of manufacturing processes. Right. It depends. What is it we want to target? Uh, it depends. It could be a group of people that working on this uh, um, on this initiative and basically reading that through. You know, something is interesting. Something that we can we can leave aside. It doesn't matter what the process is there. Again, this is a list of suggestions, potential actions that we are trying to analyze. Let's right. pick up two and this three. It's uh, uh, two and a three. Three and maybe, uh, uh, maybe, you know, maybe nine. Conducting, conducting training two. sessions. Yeah. Conducting and, and, quality and nine. control. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't matter. And, and again, we, we free to add here in anything else, right? Like reading emails because we all read emails. <laughs> unfortunately right so now we define the the actions or the functions in in our world of that customer all right let's analyze one of them uh let's go into analyzing data from manufacturing processes okay same concept here if you remember the questions that we're trying to answer we're trying to understand 
why the customer is, is doing that? What's the purpose? Right? What's the point of that? Again, we can get a little bit of help of AI or write down ourselves. It doesn't matter. It's a conversation starter with, with the AI. But in this case, the customer is analyzing data from manufacturing process to identify areas and so on and so forth and so forth. Yeah, we can use it or ignore it uh, and uh, you know, adopt this information in any way we want, if it's correct or incorrect. Again, AI is a great tool. We need to learn how to use it. We need to learn how, we need to understand that it's limited. Right. By, by the way, very... I, 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 I'm yeah, sorry ahead. to interrupt. I, I, I just want to say it's not, uh, uh, it is integrated. It was integrated with, uh, let's say, my very clever way, not directly. It's, uh, yeah. uh, there are a lot of settings, a lot of filters <laughs> in order to not to get bullshit, bullshit and uh, uh, to get short and uh, uh, reasonable answer and it's a it's an iterative learning process as well it's not once set and done it's an iterative process and it's always uh, getting improvements and adjustments it's a it's a process right so so one question yes you, can, you as you're developing this you can go back mm -hmm. and add or subtract things the process engineer does, based on your discussion, you might go to the process engineer and say, look, I've thought about your problem and I'm thinking these things might be helpful. And he said, oh, mm -hmm. I don't need this, but you left out this and that sort of thing. And that's just of iterations as you build it to a more precise definition of the uh, actions that's keeping it you know, busy that you want to prevent. Of course. Is that correct? And absolutely. And here's another example. Many times, and uh, I think Anatoly had, a, uh, uh, had an experience with that with students, different students. And it, it depends on how you focus people, right? For example, when you come into that process engineer and you just, if, you know, at the high level asking him, hey man, what do you want? What do you need? He will not have the answer for you at all because you're basically cutting him, uh, you know, you caught him all off guard. He didn't think about this. He didn't collect any of these problems that he deal with. In some cases, if he just dealt with a problem like a second ago, yes, you might say, hey, this is my biggest problem. But usually that's not the case. However, if you're saying, Hey, I analyze what you're doing today, and I think this is your most painful thing. Am I correct? And he might look at this, at, at this list, at this list here, and say, you know what? Yeah, this is great, but maybe conducting experience, experiments is the one thing that I'm doing on a daily basis. It's super painful. I want to solve, right? So you becoming the conversation. Uh, conversation partner for the process engineer, right? He is just heads down doing his work, very, very busy. What we're trying to do is to make him less busy, more happy. And less busy doesn't mean that he's not gonna do anything all day. It means that he can do more useful things. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, Unless there is any other question. Okay. No, that answered my question. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. So uh, we understood the action purpose. Again, we might communicate with that customer and say, did I understand it correctly? Is that what you're doing it for? And so on. Uh, now, the next question is, what can we do to prevent that action, right? Yet another thing that we can get a little bit of a guidance from, from AI, a little bit of a conversation started from the AI. And uh, AI in this case will come up with potential different options. Again, AI cannot be creative and that's important to understand. It can only look up something that's been done in the past. 
right? Been done in the past somewhere around the world. Uh, and it can be an idea for us to use. It doesn't mean that it's gonna be the final solution or final idea to take forward, right? It could be like here, implemented and automated data and analysis system, yada, 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 let's take that. Right? We can refine it, we can rebuild it in any way we want, right? So this is what we, it, in this case, it's actually gone a little bit one step further. Is it, what is it we providing to him as a product to eliminate this function, right? I would expect in here would, would, would be something like, uh, you know, collect the data automatically versus implement the automated system. Implement automated system, it actually did go one step further and, and provided kind of an idea of a potential product, right? But this is the question for, this is the next and last question. Given this is what we want to give him, uh, the customer as a function, what is it can we build? And of course, AI is not necessarily needed in here. And we can say, hey, to provide automated system, maybe we can integrate with something and automatically pull the data or that system can push the data to us and make it available at any point in time. Again, once we focus on ourselves into something very specific, it's much easier to think about specific solutions, right? And I'm sure you guys, by reading this, you probably already came up with a couple of ideas to, to, for, for a product, right? But even here, we can, <clears throat> we can, you know, have a, a little bit of conversation and get get it kicked off. Uh, it, it actually, in this case, it didn't do a very good job, but it's fine. Uh, we can we can say, whatever, integrate with um, with the Alex. Why? I think I think it system. was good. I was think it? it was good. It was good. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I didn't like it, but that's wasn't, a thought process, right? <laughs> it wasn't that. It, it, it gave software, okay? Machine learning. Cloud -based uh, well, actually, platform. it's 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 very good solutions, very good uh, needs that uh, customer need. Actually, this as you can see, different time that we're asking the system to generate some other ideas, it will come up potentially with different ideas, right? And this is actually much better. I don't know, we can go with a machine learning algorithm and kind of identify patterns, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so this is actually solving, if you remember, you know, why the customer does what he does, analyzes the data. This machine learning algorithm potentially analyzes the data for him and gets him, I don't know, 80% of the way there. Right, and that is a potential idea for a product for that particular customer. Again, a customer doesn't have to be an outside customer that pays money. The customer could be an internal person or a group of people or a team who is doing a lot of work. Uh, that becomes becomes your customer. Yeah, and this is a point, a good point to, to click task, create task. Hey, John, please uh, verify if we can do it and record idea. We're going to, to do this and this to satisfy our customer. These two right. buttons in the bottom. Yep, these two. So create a task in here and record an idea. Now, as we go through these different actions that we wanted to analyze, uh, as you can see, the ones that we still want to process or the ones that we're already done with and we're happy with the result, and so on. And this process repeats over and over again as we go. And then, as you can see, for a single customer, we potentially have way more than one potential product. And I'll stop here. I okay, wonder what that, reading okay, emails would, yeah. will give us. <laughs> that 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 brings up an interesting question. You you 
come up with all these potential actions that you can take mm -hmm. to your customer. Mm -hmm. uh, how is there a way that you could go in and rank these potential actions to see maybe rather than go into the customer and propose uh, four, five, or six options, you go in and say, oh, I think maybe this one and this one would help you the best. We have some more, but we think this one and this one will help you the best. What do you mm -hmm. think? Can, you, can, can we rank them? We, it, that's a good idea. We didn't think about it, but we no, we don't have a link to ranking, but it's definitely a possibility, 100%. But, but you can collect, we... I'm sure, but you can collect ideas into Idea Manager and you can uh, run there. Yeah, that's, that's true. But for example, if somebody has a lot of actions, uh, you know, instead of wasting a lot of time for analysis and collecting the data and all of that, we can say we can we can rank them as a as an innovators and then come to the client and say, listen, we have these two, three, not twenty, but two, three potential ideas for you or product for you. For him, it's going to be much easier to look at rather than twenty things. Right, it's just shortened time. Uh, right. To to answer your question, David, no, we don't have that linkage, but it it is definitely doable. Hundred percent. Next, next time it will be in. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. make it available. <laughs> well, yeah. Even if you could just put it in a little map of effort required versus expected impact, something like that, it probably will very quickly prioritize for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll need to think about the, the criteria for prioritization, right? One of the prioritization options is what we have the tooling available for it, uh, which is which is the round robin ranking. Um, and, you know, if, if we have many different options, that tool actually allows us to compare much faster uh, between different options. And lately, it was even improved, improved even more. So uh, you can you can compare relatively fast even hundreds of different options. Or maybe to use uh, to use uh, uh, effective brainstorming. It's also separates into, also into, different, yeah. into different groups and, and helps to, to make decisions. Yeah. And, and the beauty of this too is once you have all these ideas or actions, you can concentrate on one or two today. And when you solve those, then you go to the rest of them and they move up to be the more important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And whoever is your customer within the organization, believe me, they will love you. Because, hey, David is solving so many issues for us and making our life so much easier. It's amazing. Right? It's just a simple reputation for that person for yeah. not that much work, potentially. Yeah, uh, but, but it, that's it, bad for me because now they know I can do these things and I have more and more work to do. <laughs> So yeah, then, because, then, then it becomes our problem to solve for you how we can make your life easier to do that. <laughs> right? It's a chain of, of things. By the way, if you click report, you will see everything which is which was yeah, done. That's true. Everything um, is documented. Yeah, it's it's previous one. It doesn't matter. Oh, this is the previous one. Okay. That is, uh, now, now the report, the that is just... it a, like a Microsoft Word document or some kind of? Well, this is, it's formatted as a PDF. Uh, and you can, you can download it as a PDF. Um, we, we don't currently have any other formats uh, because nobody requested it. And it's fairly well, easy to do. Well, the, the, 
then it's not a problem because you could go in the PDF and copy all of it and paste it into a Word document. So it's not, a, it's not a big deal to change it. <laughs> and the reason I say that is you might want to put some uh, charts or photographs or something like that in to make your report flashier. And right. You can do that. But by the way, any any images, for example, I'll just take some some um, some of the images from the desktop. Ah, I'll take my image. Uh, once once this image is here, right, or anywhere in the content of the of the project, it could be inside the tasks, it could be inside the proposed solution, it could be inside the, I don't remember if ideas support that. Yeah, ideas as well. So any anywhere you you, you input a context, a content, it supports images, it supports as much text as you need, it supports formatting, and all of that is is eventually going to be in the report as well. Right, so all of that supported. It's basically a report is is a very detailed step by step history of everything that you've done end to end for this entire project. And I believe if we go to one of our published examples, um, uh, let, let, let's take that for example, right, and go into the report here. Again, there is, it's a much larger report. There's different pictures that related to that um, solution. And you know, even the creative tools, the information inside the creative tools, they also uh, in support uh, images and formatting and so on and so forth. And all of that is collected in order how they've been done, including, for example, you use the tool, we do, um, track of which ideas has been generated as a result of the tool, of the usage of that particular tool, right? In this case, it's a 40, 40 inventive principles and you know we generated uh, three ideas out of that. And that's the collection of all ideas that got generated on the way, which tasks were there and so on. So it's basically everything that's been done inside this particular project. I think report is very good for managers. You can click at morning and have a look what was done uh, in this particular project and what was not done <laughs> in this particular project. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, do, do you connect this to, sorry, Victor, go ahead yourself, please. Um, I have a very short question, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever tried to apply uh, this approach slash your tool to your own consulting um, business? First of all, we're not consulting business. Yeah, no. We, at least not, not trying to be consulting business. Uh, we're trying to be a software business. Okay, to a software business uh we did uh and what is that answer yes we did i mean okay. it depends what who is the customer you can you can treat yourself as a customer you can of course. abstract your business as as an object as a system and apply uh all these tools to mm -hmm optimize your own business. I, I, I just wonder if you've tried that and... Um, yeah, in general, we are using all of our tools for ourselves as well. Okay, good. Well, like it's, we are eating our own product. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Alex, my question was more in terms of, so do you have a connection between the action prevention and preventing action and the functional modeling? So in a sense, do you try to get uh, the function we, you're trying to replace don't, within we the don't, or not? Yeah. We don't yet. Okay. 
but you I can think... jump you can jump directly to functional modeling and create functional modeling right so for this function. yeah but, but i see i see where you're coming from in terms of like basically uh, take one of these actions and here's the functional model for it yeah uh, we don't have will a... give you it will give you a prioritization that you already have in the functional model as well ah you can mm -hmm. Copy and paste sure. and, and yeah. start to analyze a functional modeling yeah. or even process or yeah. even process uh, uh, modeling. Okay. Everything. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? And again, please reach out. If you have any questions at any moment, any time, uh, about any tools, in fact, not only that, uh, happy to help. So we'll find the time for it. Uh, Alex, uh, just one question, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have many tools in your system. So, uh, mm -hmm. what is available for free trial? You know, uh, we try things and see how it works, you know, just to learn a little bit, etc. Yeah, so the um, uh, let me switch to another workspace. So the, the way it works is different types of workspaces, right? So there is a free option in here, right? It allows to use any of the tools. They, it just has a little bit of limits in terms of how many items within a tool. Um, for, for example, five web, we just have the five. So for example, it's usually enough for the traditional model, not always for four hours. Uh, same, so there's some limitations that we enforcing with a free tool, but it definitely more than enough to learn and feel and, and try it out. Okay, thanks. Okay, so yeah, and in this case, uh, for example, a process functional modeling, the three items is actually three operations that you can then analyze inside the functional model itself, which has, um, you know, eight components that you can play with within the free model. And of course, we have full documentation on how to use uh, uh, each uh, tool and what can we, uh, how to use it and uh, what each tool is uh, for. Right, and just to, just to go here, I mean, every, all of these little links, they will link into the documentation or inside the tool itself. Oh, this one actually doesn't have the link. We need to fix okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> this is the only one that doesn't have it. Yeah. No, it has the documentation, doesn't have the link for some reason. Yeah, but the documentation exists with all the details and how to work with a tool. And if you go to all the creative tools, we provide the, you know, as detailed documentation as we can about each and every one of the tools. Uh, let's say, um, uh, process functional modeling. It's one of the more complex tools. It has all the details of how to use it and what to look for and what's the proposed steps of how to use it and so on and how to analyze the results. Uh, you know, analyze the, the um, summary and so on. So all of these, all of these documents, they exist. They continuously expanding over time because we added more functional, functionality and refining some of the things. Uh, um, so you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you can visit Hub, uh, which is a collection of different uh, examples. Yep. Just one question on the artificial intelligence. So what was the mm -hmm. What's the model you're using? Uh, do you have an API into something else or, or what do you use? We are obviously using uh, uh, ChatGPT currently. Okay. Uh, ChatGPT, uh, what most people are aware is just a 
simple text based, but it does have a fairly extensive API. And the key with any AI is to learn how to talk to it. Yeah. Right. And it is an iterative process. You know, there's there's multiple different models for the AI. And different models, they have different advantages and disadvantages, including costs and uh, including uh, what's the right way to talk to that machine. Uh, and and it's all about consistently adopting to the to the concept and and refining what is the right question and how do we structure that question and how do we structure the conversation with AI to get the better answers. Again, I want to highlight that even more, AI is not going to solve problems for us. Probably not in our lifetime or our kids' lifetime. AI can provide is a really good provider of information, so we don't need to go and you know library, use Google very extensively and so on. It it just makes the information much more available, but it's still an information from the past. It cannot be creative. By the way, AI is integrated in some other tools as there are five lines and the cause and effect chain, and we are continuing to integrate it into the rest of our tools. And uh, with the time, I think each tool will have this uh, button hint uh, that, uh, you know, your partner in your thinking. Yeah. This is our main idea. I yeah, know it's great. I think it's a, a very smart way of, uh, of doing it. Yeah. I, I don't agree with Alex completely that it doesn't give you anything new. Sometimes it gives you something so new that's actually rubbish. <laughs> so it, it, it makes a few hallucinations. But I think the way you have it is very good because you can accept or not the, the hints. So it's very good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's purely a conversation partner. Yeah, it's great. Exactly. Thanks. All right. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much. It was very nice. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.